Hi, Austin with Obsley Automotive, and today we're going to put a soft top on my 74 Dodge Ram Charger. Uh, you will probably notice that the front end looks like a later one. That's because it is. The front end got swapped out at some point, I guess maybe because of a wreck or something like that. Anyways, I have a hard top for this thing, but it needs some body work and paint. So in the meantime, I'm just going to get a soft top on it. And plus, part of the reasons of owning one of these pop top Ram Chargers is to be able to take the top off like it is right now and if you have the soft top you can also just roll the sides up and still have covering from the sun so you don't roast but still have the open air um, driving experience um, anyways I guess we'll get started and see how this goes I went ahead and pulled the Ram charger into my shop which is my driveway so Hopefully it don't start raining. There is a chance of rain today. I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, the first step is the bed rails. Uh, the driver's front and passenger front were packaged together. So I'm gonna assume that the rears are packaged together as well. So that should be pretty easy. They are labeled, so you can't mess that up. So let me get those unpackaged and see how this goes together. Rear rails are not marked, but obviously they can only go one way. I'm gonna put a bracket here on these four studs and the snaps for the top will go on the outside. So there's a bag with these brackets in it and the hardware. So one of these brackets goes on as such. And we got a bunch of nuts and washers here. Some clips, try not to lose those. Washers on, and put the nuts on. These are nylon locking nuts. Let me get the uh, socket that I'm going to need which is a 7 sixteenths. Let me dig out that and tighten these things down. It says for proper alignment, every stud should be centered in the slot. So, the instructions say for proper alignment, every stud should be centered in the slot. And then we'll tighten this thing down. cinch down a little bit before I do the final tightening. these things up and then cinch these things down tight. All right, with the nuts tight, this turns into basically one piece and looks like it will line up with the factory holes for the hard top, except the last one. There's no hole there because the factory hole is back here. 
So we're gonna have to drill a hole for this last one. Not a big deal. Now let's do this for the passenger side. And that same bag with the brackets was two pins with two rings, safety rings, and it's supposed to be two E-clips, but it looks like they gave you an extra one. So those are gonna go into those brackets, like this picture. Um, it does say that a bracket from a different vehicle is shown in this illustration here. So it says to put the pin into the second hole from the top. So this one looks like it only has three holes. So we'll take the pins. We need one, obviously. And second hole from the top. Holes a little tight. I'm running this back and forth a few times to get it to seat. Okay. And then our clip should go on this side. Clip goes there. And the safety ring. So second hole from the top, E-clip on the inside, and the ring on the outside. So we'll do that for the passenger side as well. Passenger side bed rail assembled, tightened down, and the same as the driver's side, second hole from the top. Like I said, these holes got a little slag in them or whatever. So might have to clean them out a little bit. seated in there and that's like the other side put the clip on put that e-clip on now we'll put the ring on to the hole here that let's see what's next all right next is on the bag with the black plastic bar retainers and hardware so I got that Using four 10 30 second screws and a number two Phillips screwdriver, mount the rear bar retainers through the thread holes in the back of the rear bed row as shown. Center the screws in the slots and fasten securely. Save the two remaining self drilling screws for later in the installation process. Okay, that's how it's supposed to look. So let's do that. So in the bags, the two plastic pieces four screws and then two self-tapping screws. So we're not gonna use the self-tappers this time around. That's for something else later on. We'll use those four. So, the black plastic piece goes on the inside rear like that and 
two screws go into those slots. Grab the screw here. And instructions say to center the screws in the slots. So I've done that, tightened down. Now we'll do the same thing to the passenger side. Mount that sucker there with the two screws. Mount it up. Passenger side and the driver's side. Next it says to get the hardware to put the bed sides on. Um, I feel like I would have done that first. Would have made it a little bit easier to mount stuff on, but um, anyways. It says to find the bag of hardware to mount the bed rails on. It might have made sense to do that before putting those plastic pieces on because then it would have been secure. Um, I guess we we'll have to drill a hole first, so I'll do that, mark that hole and drill it so I can put all the hardware on. So for each one of these mountain holes, we're going to use a bolt with a washer on top and then put a washer on the bottom and attach the nut. this roll bar here I have to go in through the back here it might be a little more difficult but you should be able to see the bolt under there if you got a roll bar I found that it's best to just sit say in the seat like I'm in a driver's seat right now and go in this way and you should be able to get the nut and washer on the back side. There is a protective film on the back side of the weather stripping on the bottom of the bed rails. I left it on there while I was fitting this stuff so nothing got damaged, but I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off. After I line this bed rail up, I'm gonna drill a hole for the last bolt. There's four on each side. So I just kind of got them lined up here. And I got the bolts started on each hole. And I'll make sure this is positioned correctly. Looks like it needs to be right at the edge here on the front. Something like that. Got the bolts all kind of tightened loosely so I can line up the bed rail and I'm going to drill a pilot hole. Drilled the pilot hole, then stepped up a couple more sizes that went along and got a bolt hole for this last one. So we'll Add the washer and nut to the underside. And then we need to do the same thing to the passenger side. So I drilled a pilot hole, then I went up a couple sizes and drilled another hole. Then I got the final size here. I already had the three other bolts and nuts tighten down. So here's the final one on the passenger side. So then I gotta stick my last washer and nut on the bottom here. And the bed rail should be done. Passenger side bed rail done. Driver side done as well. Now let's see what else we got to do. All right, next we gotta find a bag with the L brackets here. So. Looks like we're gonna put the uh, frames around the door openings. Next, we gotta put this L bracket at the front of the bed rail. They angle inwards, so be sure to get the right one. And 
It is a tight fit, it looks like. Oh, but doable. I got it to go on there, not too bad. That snapped kind of in the way. We'll put our two washers on and our two nuts. It says to tighten them down, but not all the way. I guess so we can adjust this as needed to uh, fit. Let me go put the passenger side one on. Get the two nuts and two washers. And maybe I just lucked out on that side. <laughs> Might have to take the snap off on this one. There's any way this side's going to go on. Didn't quite think that one through all the way, I guess. So let me uh, loosen up this snap. I actually found that if you just take your impact driver, you can kind of just rotate it over, and then it gives you enough space to put the bracket on and just go the opposite way. Put it back in the center and we can tighten the bracket down and again make sure they angle inward and we'll tighten these down but not all the way so we can still adjust it next we're going to add these brackets to the windshield frame they said they don't know what size the screws were originally and they said to use one of these uh, number 12 screws so we'll see what we can do here. These uh, brackets here are side specific. Obviously that one's wrong. I believe this one goes here. I guess you'll probably bend it to fit. I do have some lead or filler here from the factory, it looks like, so I'll probably have to remove that a little bit. We'll see. I cut the uh, seam sealer that was there so this bracket would fit better. And this does fit, that screw does fit there pretty decently, so I'll just keep that. I said, I think we'll probably have to bend that. Looks like it's kind of facing the down a little too much. And the same thing for the passenger side. I'll leave that a little loose because I'm sure I'll need to do a little adjustment. The door surrounds are pre-drilled for where they mount to the windshield top frame. Uh, the holes are pretty small for the number 12 screws, so I just used my impact driver to run them in. And as you can see, that enlarged the holes and made them easier to go in and out. So I just did that before I even tried to attempt to install them. Of course, alternatively, I guess you could also drill the holes out, but it's aluminum, so the impact driver had no problem running these larger screws in. Attach the two screws there at the top of the windshield frame. And down here we can see that 
it's got quite a bit of ways to go in order for the door to shut it did say in the instructions that you might have to bend the door surround a little bit to make it work so i guess i'm gonna have to bend this out a little bit so it reaches the door surrounds installed on the driver's side I ended up having to bend this one a little bit more this way you can see a little bit of a kink there um, a lot of adjusting drilled the holes mounted it up and now the door can shut the velcro side goes on the inside when you're installing these door surrounds Next, we're gonna install this header piece onto the top of the windshield frame. I had to remove the snaps that were installed for the older top that was on here and the Bimini or bikini top, however you wanna call it, that had snaps. This new piece goes right where those snaps would go, so you can't have the snaps on there, so I had to remove them all. This utilizes the four holes for the hard top as well as having to drill extra holes for the sides and in between the hard top holes. So let's get this started. The bag of hardware will have some screws and some washers and nuts and bolts. So we'll go ahead and install the four on the windshield top frame where the hard top would have bolted on and that is all these and I guess these other screws are for new holes that you'll drill we'll drop one down in there there every other one basically so there's four and then we'll put a washer on the bottom side and one of these like couple of nuts So you can access the back side from the inside here. So we'll put a washer on. It barely fits in there. And then we'll put one of those nuts on. All right, so we'll do that for each of the four. these plugs I'm missing two of them four nuts and bolts started I don't have them tightened down I'm gonna have to drill a new hole for the side here I'm supposed to drill holes here and the ones in between as well so we'll see about that as well got this header bar positioned where I want it so I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole here for the side that way it can be mounted secure got the hole drilled and that hardware sucks ass it just broke <laughs> so don't even bother trying to use the screws that they provided to put on this header they are just going to snap off um, I just went and got some screws out of my own stash and got everything all bolted up. So like I said, don't even bother because they'll just break. Next, we will mount this bar across here to the two door surrounds. It has holes pre-drilled in it. And we will stick these carriage bolts through. Then on the other side, you'll use this.
plastic fastener. And the bolts stick out a little bit, so I might enlarge the hole a little bit so the head actually goes down inside of the door surround instead of sticking out so it looks a little nicer. I enlarged the hole a little bit and that allowed the head to actually go into the surround a little bit tighter fit. Looks a lot better that way. Next we're going to put this bulb seal around the door frame. Start here and go around the side of it. Need to say you want to clean the door before you put this on. I discovered an issue. They didn't tell us to take into account the head of this carriage bolt. So now we'll have to try to readjust this door surround to have a little more space so the door clears on both sides. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. All right, I adjusted these door surrounds and bedside rails. Now the doors can shut without hitting these carriage bolt heads. So now it's time to keep going, try to get the rest of this thing done. Next, we have the rear crossbar. It's the one that has the snaps and we loop these straps on with the small looped end that's sewn onto the bar itself and then oriented so that the buckles are facing down when it's installed. So when it's attached to the one in the front, the buckle will be down. Next, we need to attach the folding frames to the crossbar. So they're marked. So on this crossbar, there's a red dot. And on this frame, there's a red dot. So we'll attach these together so that the dots line up. Now we'll push that pin in, slide it up until it locks. And you'll see the two dots are together. So then we'll put the other one. It's somehow clipped with directions there. Clip the other one to the other side. Like this. It is locked in place. We'll move these sleeves down. On both sides. safety rings that we put on before. to those pins. All right, hook the other side up, so then we'll slide the hole into the pin there. Hopefully. On 
this side, the hole is not drilled good enough, so it won't go on the pin. So I'm gonna drill that open a little bit more so I can get the pin in that hole. I got the pin through, putting that safety ring back on. There's that. Then we gotta hook the rear bar, the snaps on it to this mechanism as well. On the side. And push the pin in. We'll unhook the buckles. Make sure they're facing the right way. Then buckle it to that center bar there. And if this is installed correctly, it's gonna be like this. So the snap bar is gonna be on the back and the middle bar there will fold into it. So you can see when it opens, it opens that way. And this whole thing can fold backwards and down. Next, we'll take the top, which I got laid out here. We'll snap the snaps onto that bar. And then we're gonna lift this whole thing up over the top of the roll bar there. Next, we'll hook these safety straps here to the clips there. One on each side. So on the front of the top is a plastic strip and that'll slide underneath this aluminum strip that we uh, bolted to the top of the windshield frame. So we'll pull this over the top and slide it underneath. Got the front tucked up, it up under that strip. And next, roll this velcro around the bar here and there's one here too unless you have the top rolled up you fasten that there Same deal over here. Roll the Velcro over. 
and same deal if you have the top sides down you'll fold that over on it but it all snapped on and this is when i realized they did not send me the hatch flap see the zipper for it so i guess it's going to just be open on the back until i get a hold of them and i guess they're gonna to have to send me one anyways inside Looks like that seam where this flap is sewed on leaks water and that's what's running down and sitting on top of the weather strip going inside the door. So I figured I could put some seam sealer along the inside of this and this flap will probably actually do its job. After several weeks, I finally got the soft top rear it's called flap or window or whatever. So now I can actually put it on and park the truck out in the weather. I've had it under my carport overhang for a while now parked. It looks like it fastens at the top with Velcro and down the sides with zippers. There's Velcro there on each side as well. And on the inside which i guess you'd stick velcro strips on the tailgate to hold it down so i guess we'll see about this i'm assuming this velcro strap that's on the main top is supposed to be able to connect to the uh, rear window flap but it's too short so i guess we'll just leave that off for now um I don't think it'll affect anything. Then we can stick the Velcro portion on the top here, which will secure it. And then I think that metal rod goes in this to kind of keep it straight. This side of the Velcro strap reaches. I guess this is just to keep the zipper from coming all the way off and making the uh, hatch come open. So, I guess we got all that sorted. So now I should have a flap on the back. You see that metal bar goes in there and that sleeve there are these two end pieces and the two soft tapping screws that we saved from a long time ago so this goes in here and I guess we'll adjust it left and right so that it snaps in that bracket it's on each side and then use the screw to Locked in place with that pre-drilled hole there. And then you pull the flap down and snap it in. As such, so now I need to add the screws in to the respective holes. And that should be that.
The kit comes with three Velcro strips that you can put along the tailgate. And that's to keep it from flapping. There is Velcro on the back side there. Um, I guess it can look a little hokey if you don't have the flap down, but it also prevents from having to drill holes into your tailgate and add snaps, though that might be a little more secure. Um, I guess I'll probably add the Velcro strip so this thing ain't flapping in the wind. It does say it's optional on the directions, but you can see it's kind of bunched up and wrinkly, but if we get the Velcro on there, we can probably pull it tight. All right, got those three Velcro strips on there. So we can pull the flap down tighter, hopefully. And there we have it, the bottom is secure. These wrinkles should come out in the sun. It's kind of cold and overcast right now, but this should keep it from flapping. And I was able to get this a little tighter on here so it fits better, looks a little better. Well, that's basically how you put one of these soft toppers on a Ram charger. Uh, I think it was kind of made to work. Um, some things were obviously from other kits, I believe, maybe from like K5 Blazers and such. But uh, it does work, and it keeps most of the weather out, and looks better than nothing, I guess. And it's functionality. Um, a lot of people don't like the way the back looks. Um, I don't particularly mind it. Um, and these do come in other colors. I got black, but you can also get it in gray and tan. I think black fits most uh, colors of trucks, and I believe originally you could only get a white top and a black top when these trucks were new. Uh, you can fold the sides up and the back and have it a uh, safari style. Um, you can also fold the whole thing back like a convertible if you wanted to go uh, with no top, um, but then you bake in the sun. Uh, I'm probably gonna leave it uh, always closed. I might throw the sides up in the hot weather, um, but all in all, uh, not too bad of an install. Definitely takes longer than uh, the time they said it would take on the instruction sheet. Can't remember what it said, like an hour? Um, yeah, it took a lot longer than that. Plus I had to wait for the, the back hatch to come in the mail. Um, but anyways, Hope you enjoyed the video and if you're wanting to put one of these on your truck i would recommend it um, it works pretty good you have to do a little re-engineering some fitting of stuff because it doesn't fit exactly perfect um, i tried to cover those things in the video anyways uh catch you on the next one